Okay, we're going to take a look at the 13-2 practice worksheet, which is uh, using number lines to find equivalent fractions. Now, this is one way to do it. Um, we are also going to use our fraction flip book because that's, that's a, a great way to do it as well. We do need to be able to see it on the number lines, but sometimes it's very helpful to use our fraction flip book to really get a good uh, sense of equivalent fractions as well. So write two fractions that name the same location on the number line. Let's just jump right into here. Um, so we have, uh, basically you want to kind of ignore this one down below. Okay, just look at this number line up here. And we need to figure out which one is missing. Okay, so we have one sixth, some number six, three six, four six, five six, and of course we know this is six six. So what one is missing here? One, three, four, five, six, that would be two six, right? So we need to figure out, well, what is this? Well, okay, again, kind of then ignore the top one, okay? So that's six there. This is this, if you can see this, kind of easier to write it down below. That one's two thirds. See how that's right there? Two thirds, okay? So we have one, two, three sections. We know this is three thirds, this one's two thirds, so what must this be? one-third, okay? So our equivalent fractions here, they've boxed it for us. We're gonna say one-third is the same as two-sixths. Now, let's just take a look at our fraction flip book, okay? We have one-third is right here, and that is the same as two-sixths. See how the line is exactly the same spot? So one-third is the same side as two-sixths. We also know if we're looking at it, we've, we've shown this too, right? One third is equal to two six, okay? What we do to one side, we must do to the other side. So what, what do you multiply times three to make it be a six? What should that be? Three times what is six? How many threes make a six? Two, right? So if you're multiplying the top by two also, three times two is six, one times two is six, so, I'm sorry, one times two is two. So therefore, two six is the same as one third. And if I were to draw this, well, you know what? it's gonna be hard to, well, it'll be okay. Okay, one third, right? And if I had a pizza here, like that, and I ate two sixths, you can see that's about the same. I know my, my, it's not perfect. A little bit shorter there. Okay, but two sixths is the same as one third. Okay, so when you have, if you think about it, you have twice as many sections. Here you only had three sections. You took these sections and divided them into half each, right? So now you each section in the six are smaller and you're eating two of them. So it ends up being about the same. Okay. So you can think of it as a number line, you can think of it as using your fraction flip book, or you can always draw pictures too, okay, to find out. But you could also look at it as the multiplication factor too. So for number two, okay, we're going to ignore the bottom part, okay, and just look at this top fraction here. What number is missing? One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, this is one whole right here, so it'd be eight eighths, okay? Now and look at the bottom. Okay, they're writing the fractions above, you can see. I would be, it would be smarter to write them below. So one-fourths, two-fourths, three-fourths, what was this one must be over here? Four-fourths. So we're going to say that four-fourths, four-fourths is equivalent to eight-eighths, okay? And again, couple ways to know that. Okay, four fourths is equivalent to eight eighths. Okay, four times what equals eight? Two. And four times two equals eight. Plus we know that four fourths is one whole and eight eighths is one whole. So whenever our numerator and denominator are the same, it's going to equal one whole. Okay, I would like you to do three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna have you pause it and do those. Okay?
you need to pause it if you didn't already. Okay, let's take a look here. So this one should be two thirds, one six, two six, three six. This should be four six. So your equivalent fractions are two thirds and four six. Okay. This would be four eighths, and this would be one half. Okay, so one half is equivalent to four eighths. It doesn't matter what side that's on. Okay, so this is, we got one, two, three, four sections. So four fourths, three fourths, two fourths, and one fourth. So your equivalent fractions, you could either do two halves and four fourths. You can put these right here. One half and two fourths are the same. Okay, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So your denominator is eight eighths. So this one's gonna be one eighth, this would be two eighths. So you could use these as equivalent fractions. You could use those as equivalent fractions. So it, or you could use these as equivalent fractions. Any, you could use, down here could say one fourth equals two eighths. It could also say two halves equals four eighths. It also could say three fourths equals six eighths. Okay, all right, let's go back, look at the back. All right, number seven. Oliver and Peter had the same length of string. Oliver used three-fourths of his string to tie a bundle of newspapers. Peter used six-eighths of his string to tie a bundle of, news, of magazines. Did they use the same amount of string? So basically, they want to know, is three-fourths equivalent to six-eighths? That's what they want to know, okay? Um... And that's a question mark, right? Did they use the same amount of string? Draw a number line and write the fractions to show your answers. Okay, so we're going to ignore this bottom number line here, okay? And we have one, two, three, four different sections. So we know that this is four fourths, okay? Which makes this one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. And we are looking at three fourths is how much string Peter used, okay? Now let's look at the bottom one, okay? Let's count our number of sections that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight eighths, <clears throat> and then you're gonna need to go one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. So is three fourths, this is three-fourths and this is six-eighths. Are they equivalent? Yes, they are. Here's a couple ways to look at it. Okay, what do you multiply times four to get to eight? And is three times two six? It is, so they're equivalent, okay? We could also look at our number line. I mean, our fraction flip book. Okay, so three-fourths, one, two, three. So here's where three-fourths is. And six eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're at the same spot right here. Three fourths and six eighths. So six eighths takes up the same amount of space as three fourths. So they are equivalent. Okay, number eight. Eric divides a strip of paper into eight equal parts. This one's tricky. He cuts off two of the parts. Okay, so we had eight parts. He cut off two. So, so what's our denominator now? How many do we have left? Six, okay? He shades four of the remaining parts blue. We only have six remaining parts. We had eight and he cut off two of them. So now we, we only have eight parts. He shades four of them blue. So he shaded four out of the six. He shaded four sixth blue. All right, use your fraction flip book, okay? So how can he use fraction strips, which the, these are fraction strips, okay? to show that three fourths and seven eight are not equivalent. So let's look at seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's seven eighths right here, okay? And three fourths. One, two, three ends right here. So three fourths ends here, seven eighths ends there. Are they the same? No, one ends here, one ends here, okay? So seven eighths is actually longer, okay? Also, we're, we're comparing three-fourths to seven-eighths, right? 
So write that down. Three fours is equal to seven eighths. What number do you multiply four to get to eight? Two. And is three times two seven? No. It is not. They are not equivalent. It would have to be six eighths in order to be equivalent because three. if you're multiplying four times two to get to eight, three times two also has to be equal on the top. So um, no, three fourths is shorter than seven eighths. You'd say shorter, smaller, anything like that. All right. This one doesn't really have anything to do with fractions. We're going back to equal groups and division. Isabel says she divided 32 by 8 and got 4. So she takes 32, she divides it by 8, and she gets 4. Okay, this is like I had 32 slices of pizza, and I divided them equally between 8 people. Everyone gets 4 slices. She says that if she does 32 divided by 4, that the quotient, that's the answer, is going to be greater than four, okay? So she's saying if I take these 32 pieces of pizza and I divide them equally between four people, everyone's gonna get more than if I divide it by eight. Is she correct? Yes, she is. Okay, so the smaller the number you divide by, the more each person gets, right? Remember that fancy Nancy term, divisor? The smaller the divisor, the larger the quotient, which is that fancy Nancy term for answer, for uh, answer division. Okay, Perry thinks that one half and two fourths are equivalent, but when he draws these number lines, I'm gonna erase this over here because it's in my way. My answer is in my way of my next problem. Okay, Perry thinks that one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions, but when he draws the number lights to the right, he sees that one half and two fourths do not name the same location. Here's two fourths and here's one half. They are not lined up. But when I use my fraction flip book, I see that one half is right here and two fourths is right here. They are, they are equivalent, right? One half is right there, two fourths is right there. So what's he doing wrong? Look at how long this number line compared is to that number line. You have to be comparing apples to apples. You're, you're, if, you're right. If, I, if my race is this long and I ran half of it, that's not as far if my race is longer and I run two fourths. The, the, the races have to be the same distance. So this number line needs to extend way out here. And if it did, if our start and our stop parts were the same, then my halfway mark would be right there and they would be the same. But, but the, the number lines aren't the same size, therefore half of a smaller thing is not going to be the same as two-fourths of a bigger thing, right? The pizza sizes have to be the same. Okay, so you can explain that. All right, Tanner used two ribbons of, of oh, Tanner, look at you. Tanner used two ribbons of equal lengths to wrap a package. One ribbon is four-eighths of a yard. And which of the following is not a possible length for the second length? Okay, so we want, they're basically asking us for which one of these is not equivalent to four eighths. Okay, so again, a couple things you could do. You could use your fraction flip book. You could also write it out. Okay, let's, let's look at, let, we'll start with, with C. Okay, four eighths is equal to one half, right? I could do that. Okay, what number do I multiply or divide by eight to get to two? I divide by four. Eight divided by four is two, and four divided by four is one. So one half is equivalent. We're looking for the one that's not, okay? So you could also look at your fraction flip book. I did one half compared to four eighths. One, two, three, four compared to one half. And those are equivalent. Okay, so you can do the same thing to the other three and find the one that's not equivalent. 
And then number 13, Stacy made a number line to show equivalent fractions. Which of the following fractions is equivalent to 6 eighths? You're going to do the same thing. You can use your multiplication division. You can use your fraction flip book. But which one is equivalent? So here you're looking for the one that's not equivalent. Here you're looking for the one that is. Okay? Good job.